It was a very strange fire. When I got up in the morning, I looked out to the uh, south and east and saw smoke coming up. It wasn't that big, and it looked like it was a couple canyons over. My son and I were sitting back here watching the fire come up the valley and then all of a sudden the wind shifted. Literally the winds had shifted and the fire was probably only about 500 feet down the road. And it started blowing then further northeast and over towards the east yeah. uh, and then all of a sudden it started blowing back then this ridge blew up. And you could see walls of flame shooting way up above the tops of the trees and the houses. It was totally unpredictable. What everyone in the mountain knows, you know, that you're supposed to have a plan, you're supposed to have an emergency escape box. And like most people, we knew we should do that, and we didn't. He called me and said, what should I take? And I said, take the passports? <laughs> Try to get pictures? So I got some of the things. I got the passports. I got that's a all. few clothes. Yeah. And that was about it. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, I would have taken very different things. As firefighters, we do what's called triage, where we go through and we say, savable, not savable. And we have about 10 seconds to make that call. So if your house looks better than not, we're probably gonna go try to save that. If you've done nothing in your yard, we're gonna say, we'll go save the people's houses that have. There's too much burnable material too close. One of our family people called up there, gave us a heads up. The quote we got was, Gold Hill is burning. The trees caught on fire right on the edge of town. Because the smoke was so thick in here at that point, Nobody could tell, you know, what was burning and what wasn't. The row of houses where the fire was right behind it had 250 foot of flame potentially, and that's intense. We sat on pins and needles for a day and a half, figuring, well, our place is gone. We evacuated Gold Hill. We gave up on this town because of fire conditions. I left town, had a tear in my eye at the bottom of the canyon, saying, wow, we just lost our town. Two plumes that come up right here over Gold Hill. My name is Andrew Brian Martinek. I'm on Indian Peaks Fire Department. The and sun blacked dark. out. Yeah. It was like nothing you've ever seen. You, it was apocalypse now. It was black. My family's always been in and around these parts. They used to live in Gold Hill. It's, Chris Finn said to me, not. what has God got against Gold Hill? Yeah. I saw the smoke plume. I got my gear on. I got down to the road. I was over in Jamestown at my mother's house. and saw the smoke and sped out and then got the call. The first Indian Peaks vehicle was already leaving. Jumped on, came straight over here. And was here probably 30 minutes after the page went off. 20 minutes, we didn't take long to get here. The Gold Hill guys tragically got sent to Emerson Gulch fire right away and they wouldn't let them back up four miles back to Gold Hill. They no, got they trapped got away from their the own town. Side. They put us on their trucks. There, we started just down the way here protection. on Dixon Run, where Rim Road tags into Dixon Run. We were just building line, putting out fire that was there, back burning. They down like, there was every bad. other house burnt, every other house didn't. We did what yeah. we could, but a lot of houses had firewood stacked on their propane tank, and that led to explosions. And it was so sporadic. 
Like I watched it burn around a truck and then back to the house and burn the house. Right and his back. truck was still there the next day when we came back and his house yeah. was gone. All day we were waiting for air support, waiting for air support. It was never coming. We thought Gold Hill was gonna burn. And then finally at the end of the day, number 54 bombed and dropped retardant up the back of all these houses, right on the line. I remember that drop because it was, uh, it was real intense. And he dropped in low and he just painted the back of all these houses red perfectly with retardant. Oh, the visibility was horrible. But it's the wind that was pushing it. The amazing thing is half the house is red from the retardant and half is not. So he got half houses and mostly fire, and that's just impressive. We have really talented people in the lead planes that, that pick out that stuff, and uh, we just get on their tail and just go do it. This guy nailed the drop. You couldn't have asked for a better shot, you know? When my brother stayed here behind, I had a cell phone contact with him, and he was here, standing here in the meadow, and, and he looked up and he said, I see them coming. Here they come, here they are. And then the next thing he said was, Oh my God, I'm all red. They got me. I was never job. so happy to get slimed in my life. It, it could have been vomit as long as it put the fire out. I didn't care. It's funny, you look back at all these houses that didn't burn and they're slurry. I mean, you I can know. see the yeah. slurry patches right everywhere. That's slurry. Well, this is the this is a good picture too. This is oh, I love that picture, the overhead shot. You've seen that one probably. That's right this where is, we're at this right is, now. That's, that's the house, this house right here. Literally 15 or 20 minutes later, this place would have been ashes. It was in the nick of time. It, a minute later, it could have, uh, it was It was none too soon. Without the boys on the ground, uh, uh, the drop wouldn't have done them any good. I mean, uh, I'm, just, I'm just a tool in the tool shed. When we fled, I was like, this is sad. I was like, I hope Gold Hill doesn't burn. The topography here is intense. You know, most of Boulder County is the western half, once you get west of Boulder, is like this. It's steep canyons, steep rocks. That's going to be a major factor. Weather's the other major factor. That day it was blowing very hard. The wind was so intense that day that I mean, it you just, firestorm. exactly, just fire everywhere. the wind was in charge. You just kind of yeah. tried to stay out of its way. The third one is fuels. Our mountains are heavily laden with fuels right now. If you look around here, we've done a lot of fuel mitigation at people's houses. The Forest Service has done ton. And I think they have some good information where some of that worked for this fire. They reorganized the us. And at that moment, that the wind had died. That was yeah, the major difference, was the strong wind died. It, all of a sudden, the wind was neutral. And they sent us all back up. We lined 20 trucks long, starting here, me and we Rusty, with 5404 <laughs> in a Gold Hill truck. And leading up the way, yeah. we had High Country, we had Left Hand, we had Jamestown. Everyone here was doing everything they could. And we all formed a wet line right here and started putting out spot fires, trying to save houses. And that yeah, was really the saving the moments of Gold Hill. It's as if you, you come up uh, the canyon and you get a little taste of it and a little smell of it and then a little bit more and then all of a sudden you see the first house that was destroyed and then the second one and the third one and the fourth one. Uh, the devastation of the forest, the flames went through the graveyard, the historic graveyard. Um, uh, and then it got, you know, just worse and worse until you got up uh, to kind of the flats. Um, just east of here, and then all of a sudden it was incredibly green. And you come into town and you think, oh wow, well it wasn't that bad. Then all of a sudden you see the burn marks up on this ridge, you see the entire meadow and the forest all the way up to the ridge burned out, you see it within 100, 200 feet of town, and how absolutely incredibly close it came to burning down this historic mining town. It was just uh, amazing, it was shocking. It's been unbelievable. I came up a few days later once they opened it up and I wanted to see what work we had done and seen how we did. 
and the residents saw that I had a shirt on, and they just come up and they're they're hugging you, they're thanking you, they're bringing you bottles of wine. We really want to find the slurry bomb. They got free beers here for the rest of their lives. <laughs> the wonderful Those people are awesome. It's just unbelievable, and they were so thankful. <laughs> And I was blown away that their house was still here. So I just had a little bit of feeling they had this huge amount, you know. We've got a lot of people to be thankful to and for. Everyone here gave what they could to protect a neighboring community. We just did what we could, but this town is unbelievable. It's, it's a unique town, and it's always had that town spirit. It, it seems so capricious, and I'm sure there's science behind it, but I'd like to know. We've lived in the mountains in two different places. In our last house, I guess we had a very cavalier attitude. You know, we had a dex, and you could reach out and hug the trees. We were the younger. Decks. <laughs> and, you know, in hindsight, if we'd had that house in this fire, it would be gone. You know, you should really take seriously the uh, information you get about defensible space, mowing the grass and the weeds around your house, you know, creating good access so firefighters can get in with a big truck full of water, things of that sort that sound like, yeah, 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 but they make the difference when a fire comes through. They can make the difference yes. if the conditions are right. There are no guarantees, No guarantees. But you can be pretty sure that if you haven't done any of all these things, you know, your chances are much worse. Probably the hardest part for me is the fact that it was kind of loved by the community. The old homestead place out there that was well over 100 years old, that building. It's gone now, but there's a big yellow rose bush that was growing right next to the wall of that place that's still there. Why? Nobody has a clue. You know, it's just one of those things. <laughs>